Pedology is the scientific study of soil wherein we study the genesis of soil, soil profile, soil structure, texture, distribution, involved and use. Soil is a very valuable resource. It is renewable resource and it is very important gift by nature to man. Soil is being used by nature as well as by man. But today, due to human activities, soil is facing a number of problems. The main problem is soil erosion and the second problem is soil pollution in situ. So, in this chapter, we have to focus on the soil erosion, soil degradation and the soil conservation. Soil erosion means transportation of soil from one place to other by exogenic forces. Soil degradation means the uh, degradation or decrease in the quality of soil in situ. In erosion, the place of soil is being changed. In degradation, soil place is not changed, rather in situ at a place it undergoes degradation. Thus, these are the two problems. Soil erosion is one problem and soil degradation or soil pollution is the other problem. When there will be question on soil problem, you will have to cover erosion and degradation. And if there is question on soil erosion, you will cover only erosion and if there is on degradation, then on pollution. But for both here, the conservation measures are also given because today the world humanity is fed up with these two soil problems. That's why some conservation measures also have been designed and those are being implemented. Now here the main topic is soil problem which has two parts. Number one is soil erosion and number two is soil pollution or soil degradation in C2. Here soil erosion consists of two parts. Number one, it is natural and the second is man-made. Nature develops soil but nature degrades soil. How nature erodes soil? These are the factors causing soil erosion and before them in their front their conservation measures have been given and these have been shown on world map. In man-made factors these are the factors caused by human activities and their conservation measures. You can here decide which one is most important from examination viewpoint by UPSC. Certainly nature is the builder of soil and nature degrades or nature erodes it. But this is human interference which is most important because a developed soil nature erodes soil but nature conserves naturally. Contrary to it when man interferes and man erodes that soil so it is very difficult to be conserved by the nature that's why human interference or human effort is needed there. Now let us study one by one first the soil erosion by natural forces. Number one is splice erosion. As you know that when the drops from atmosphere fall on the loose material or soil uh, due to the impact of that drop the soil is being removed and this is called splice erosion and this splice erosion generally takes place in different fertile soil plains like Mississippi, Missouri, Huang Ho, Yang Tisi, Ganga, Yamuna etc. And the main controlling measure or conservation measure is the development of grassland or range land management or plantation of shrubs and trees. The canopy or the leaves of which may 
protect the soil from the impact of splice erosion. Second one is sheet erosion when the small drops fall from the atmosphere and the soil or the ground is being saturated then water starts flowing in the form of sheet and it carries down the soluble minerals of soil like calcium, potassium, magnesium thus that soil becomes infertile. For conserving the soil from this sheet erosion the bonding of land has been designed that's why the that's why the farmers make demarcation around their agricultural farmlands next point is rill and gully erosion when the sheet erosion moves along the steep slope the along that steep slope the water cuts down small rills and the and when the two rills meet it is called gully in the rill and gully there is vertical erosion this causes a heavy loss to the fertile soil and this occurs generally along the foot hills for example along the southern slope of Siwalik eastern slope of Appalachian and likewise the western slope of this great dividing range etc and to protect soil from rill and gully erosion there is a procedure of bonding of rill and gully head and the check dam and the extra dam check dam extra dam extra dam means the dam made up of the leaves and the material of agricultural crops and this protects the soil from being eroded by the rill and gully process. Next wise river. Next point is river lateral erosion. In plain areas where there is gentle slope, rivers make lateral erosion in the meandering valley or meandering course. This cuts fertile land and makes a scarp and that fertile land is being eroded down thus there is great loss of fertile soil. To protect the fertile land from the lateral erosion by river, dike along the river and spurs along the river and sometimes continuous wall called embankment is being constructed and this practice is being done in most of the river plain of the world. Next is river vertical erosion. When there is a steep slope and river follows that steep slope generally in mountainous region for example Ganga, Yamuna over Himalayas that cuts deep valleys and the soil developed and deposited in the river bed is being eroded down. That's why there the conservation measure is artificial lake. In the course of river valley, artificial lakes are being constructed which provide a secondary base level and that secondary base level or that lake protects the soil to be cut deep. Next point is wind. Wind also removes fertile soil from one place to another place and the minerals valuable minerals of that soil are being removed the soil becomes unfertile this happens generally in desert region hot desert and semi arid areas to control the fertile soil from being eroded by wind or eolian process wind breaks are developed wind break means the row of plants which decreases the speed or velocity of the wind thus control soil from being eroded second measure is drip and sprinkling irrigation there is open irrigation which requires much water but in drip and sprinkling irrigation the wild the water is being protected 
in less water more area is being irrigated that's why the water is conserved as well as the larger tract of arid and semi arid region subject to soil erosion are also being preserved and dry zone agriculture is the best practice in such arid and semi arid areas where this evolution process is active for example in india in rajasthan and haryana states next point is marine erosion throughout day and night the waves are busy in cutting the coastal areas in coastal areas there is tract of fertile soil along the coastal plains and if the marine waves erode that soil is being eroded down deposited in the ocean basin that's why there is a great loss to the fertile soil in the coastal areas of the world to protect that fertile soil from marine erosion there is a provision of dike construction spur and embankment these are common in the river basin areas and in the coastal areas and this is a great challenge before the humanity because today due to global warming and sea level rising the oceans are moving or advancing towards the land and encroaching most of the coastal plain that's why this type of dike spur and embankment construction is very much important to protect from marine erosion next is glacial erosion there are glaciated areas in high latitude and high altitude like himalayas where this glacial erosion will be more effective whether in high latitude or in high altitude you can answer it very easily because in high latitude the glacial process will not be so much effective as much effective in high altitude because in high altitude for example over rockies andes and himalayas and alps there is a steep slope from snow capped mountains the glaciers move down causing vertical erosion whatsoever soil has been developed there by the glacial process it may be coarse soil it may be morainic soil but that is being removed by this glacial process to control this erosion there is bonding by stone stones of different sizes are being arranged in a line just like a demarcation and the glacial water or glaciers bringing down the fertile soil from mountain tops are being controlled by this bonding by the stones next point is periglacial near the glacial just like its brother periglacial region is there in high latitude and high altitude for example near the arctic and near the snow line over the lofty mountains and in periglacial region there are different processes working like solid fluxion congelly fluxion solid turbation and this removes the fertile soil from there that's why the best remedy or conservation measure from the glacial erosion is also bonding by stone like that in the glacial region so these are the natural factors causing soil erosion or removing soil from one place to another place but it is a challenge before man to protect this soil erosion natural process because soil is a very valuable product by nature taking a long time and soil everywhere whether in glacial region periglacial region temperate zone high mountain hot desert region coastal region equatorial region savanna region everywhere soil is important for 
growth of vegetation and for the existence of ecosystem ecology and ultimately for the existence growth and development of humanity now come to the second part of this soil erosion which is man made man is interfering in the inter in the environment because today man is scientific needy and greedy that's why man is interfering in soil how number 1 is over grazing there are there are a number of pastures means in temperate grassland regions like prairie steppe pampas veld and downs where there are vast tract of pasture and in the same way here in savanna region the tropical grasses are there which also serve the pasture land and there uncontrolled and overgrazing causes soil erosion by the animals but to control this type of soil erosion by overgrazing there are two measures number 1 control on overgrazing and number 2 range land management range land management means these steppe and temperate grasslands should be managed properly and there the uh, fodders and other crops should be grown for the survival and ex- existence of the animals there second point is mining mining is generally practiced over plateau land because plateau of world are rich deposits of minerals and some minerals are found over the folded mountainous regions thus mining is practiced to extract those minerals and after this mining nothing is done there no filling of soil no plantation that's why that becomes a ravine land and the soil of that area is being eroded as well as degraded at c2 and it is also polluted but here we are studying the problem of soil erosion that's why to protect the soil from being eroded in the mining regions of world we have to uh, apply the conservation measures like leveling and plantation of that land after mining that area should be leveled and trees should be planted there so that layer of greenery spreads and that plant will protect soil from being eroded this type of mining is generally practiced in here appalachian region near ural mountain and here in the plateau land of india and the plateau land of china so these are the main areas where due to mining soil is being eroded next point is leveling of mountain people are reaching in mountainous areas for the tourism purpose for agriculture for plantation crops and for other scientific purposes that's why for road construction and for other uh, urban development their uh, their trees are being cut roads are being developed and that's why there is a leveling practice over the mountain areas and this leveling causes a great loss of soil fertile soil is being uh, washed down by fluvial process by rain water to protect that soil only there is way of plantation next point is deforestation actually forests and trees develop the soil by biological weathering and they add humus and enrich that soil convert that into a fertile soil but as the forests are cut down their roots fail to contain the moisture 
contain the pets and the exogenic forces like fluvial process, wind process, all these become active and start eroding the valuable soil. That is why in the deforested area, in the deforested areas there is great loss to soil that can be conserved by the reforestation and this reforestation practice is being applied by a number of countries. Next is mountain plowing. In mountain areas for growing different crops there is plowing practices because sometimes there wheat, potato and uh, other crops are being grown for which plowing is necessary and that plowing should be according to contour not from top to bottom because on mountain the plowing from top to bottom causes furrows which are being eroded down rills and gullies developed by the fluvial process. But if there is a contour plowing provision the soil erosion will be controlled. That is why to protect the soil from this the contour plowing and step plantation or agriculture is the only way. In step farming from mountain top to its foot different steps are being formed and along the margin of those steps different shrubs are being grown to control the soil being eroded. And next is road construction on mountain. Today mountains are not inaccessible to man, to scientific man. People are reaching there to solve the different purposes like agriculture, plantation crops and tourist places for which road construction is necessary but roads are not straight from mountain by mountain foothill to mountain top rather these are in circular way according to contour that is why the roads are being constructed and the mountains are being cut that result into landslide, rock fall, landslip and the loss and erosion of fertile soil. To protect from this along the roads, there stone walls, stones of different sizes are being collected and along both the sides of the constructed road, these are arranged in such a way so that the soil coming from mountain top is being controlled by this and it does not come down to the valleys. And thus the mountain are being protected from the soil loss and it is the beauty of the mountain that there is a thin layer of soil although not thick layer like that in the plains rather mountains have a thin layer of soil which support the thick layer of vegetation and there is a rich biosphere. That is why especially on mountain regions we should although reach there collect their resources but we have to keep the soil thickness of mountains in our mind to keep the mountain environmentally and ecologically happy. Now in soil problem there are two parts number one soil erosion soil erosion by nature soil erosion by man this man made soil erosion is very serious problem for which here remedies have been given on my petition now the second soil problem is the soil pollution or soil degradation in c2 that will be discussed in the next board There are two soil problems, number one is soil erosion, the other is soil degradation. Soil degradation means soil pollution, soil pollution means no transportation of soil from one place to another rather it is in situ. That is why here the main heading is soil problem, 
which has two parts number one is soil erosion that we have discussed in two parts number one natural number two man-made and there we have studied the conservation measures also now the second part of the soil problem is soil degradation or soil pollution in situ which also has two parts number one natural and number two man-made how nature pollutes or degrades soil there are two factors or two ways number one is flood when flood comes a voluminous amount of mud is being carried down with flood water which covers the fertile land and this makes the soil unfertile for example this flood affects the plain areas where there are river plain and two mighty or two forceful rivers meet for example here in the here in usa near st louis two mighty rivers mississippi and missouri meet and there is a severe flood likewise here in the lower part of amazon there is flood likewise here at the mouth of jaira or congo flood occurs flood severely affects the lower gangetic plain and the lower valleys of wang ho yang tsi kiang and mare darling that's why this is the flood to control the soil from flood the flood control measures are necessary to control the soil from this flood means there is there are different measures to control the flood like the large dams diversion canal embankments dike spurs these are the controlling measures for the conservation of soil in flood prone areas number 2 is drought drought also damages the fertile soil because drought generally occurs in the arid and semi arid regions of the world where there is less rain but but high evaporation due to high rate of evaporation the minerals especially the salts through capillary reaction are brought down deposited on the earth surface and that's why the soil becomes calcimorphic means there is richness in the calcium this takes place generally along the cancer and capricorn in the hot desert and semi arid regions to protect the soil from this drought condition only the social forestry is the way in social forestry the forests or the plants are being practiced on the land of the people by the people for the people next point next part of the soil degradation is this man made wherein there are several factors and it is very important from examination view point first factor is usurization usurization means the land becomes usur usur why land is becoming usur in the plain fertile areas because of use of chemical fertilizer and use of and use of uh, ha and use of herbicide insecticides rodenticides which are being there deposited in soil and that soil becomes usur land that is not fertile for the next crop for conserving soil from this impact of usurization there is only the way to use bio fertilizer for example the green manure and the cow dung and ryobium culture in place of this chemical fertilizers and it is a great challenge in the plain areas all over world which are generally called the granary of the world second point is salinization salinization means along the canal 
due to canal irrigation the soil becomes unfertile because the salt content is being increased that's why the people are leaving their farms along the canals for example in punjab there are different canals or branches different branches of the uh, satluj command area among which abohar canal is very important which reaches in the southwestern part of the punjab state and there is one area called muktasar the farmers of that region have left their farms because of this salinization process it is not in india rather this phenomena has been seen all over world that's why to protect the soil from this salinization this canal irrigation there is only conserving measure the use of tubewell water or ground water for irrigation purpose next point is arsenic in subsurface water arsenic means when the chemicals like these fertilizers and herbicides fungicides insecticides rodenticides are being used in different crops agriculture those mixed with water uh, filter down in the subsurface and the subsurface water gets polluted that pollution is called arsenic pollution this pollution is being noted generally in the areas of the lower reaches of the river valleys for example in india the ganga system has arsenic problem in its lower segment for example the subsurface water in west bengal has been badly affected by this arsenic pollution and that pollution has been flowed down from the west up by the irrigation process from delhi also and that arsenic in the eastern part of the west bengal is now advancing towards west some reports reveal that the entire bihar is under the grip of subsurface arsenic problem and according to some report it has reached to allahabad it has reached to kanpur and next point is here the waste land when the farmers stop practicing agriculture they leave the land they neither plow the land nor manage it nor do any type of agriculture practice or plantation that land uh, falls in the hand of nature and nature plows it their rills and gullies are being developed and that unmanaged land is called waste land and this causes a great loss to the soil to conserve the soil from this waste land practice the proper use of land is the only way either those land lords should do agriculture practice in that area or they should hand it over to others for agriculture purposes next point is bad land bad land is a land found in semi arid regions which are also not in the use of agriculture and that is being subjected to either fluvial erosion or wind erosion this bad land is also very much fertile has rich content of minerals but in absence of water and proper management it is not fertile that's why the plantation and the leveling of that land is necessary after leveling if plantation will be done then there will be plants forest vegetation which may invite rain god and cause some 
amount of rain there and soil useful next point is wetland wetland is an area which has water moisture throughout year or seasonal this wetland cannot be brought in agriculture practice today the area of wetland is continuously increasing for example we are constructing we are constructing artificial lakes on the rivers there are a number of canals along which deep wetlands have been developed likewise along the coast there are wetlands these wetlands are very important lands having moisture water and some amount of fertility and to use it there are wetland management wherein aquaculture and other crops requiring much amount of water are being practiced like rice fish pisciculture right <clears throat> wetlands are suitable for the pisciculture rice culture and other crops requiring much amount of water next point is ravine land ravine land means where there are rills and gullies these are although natural but sometimes people leave the land in the hands of nature and there is a ravination process like along the northern margin of the indian plateau and the western margin of the west ghat mountain to protect this fertile soil from this type of ravination the leveling and plantation practices are necessary when land is being leveled and plantation are being done the soil is being protected from this ravination process next is zooming agriculture zooming means the change of fields not change of crop there is one practice of crop rotation in which in a year crops are being rotated suppose in one year there is a leguminous crop then the next year there will not be leguminous rather other food grain but in zooming agriculture there will be no rotation of crop rather there will be rotation of field suppose on one field this year crop size been grown so next year that field will be left and on the next neighboring field the crops will be grown that's why here the lands are being left the, and on that land the second year some shrubs and trees grow which for next crop is being burnt and and slice and burn practice this is called burning and burning of that shrub and tree causes a great loss to the microorganism of the soil and it is a great challenge before the soil scientist and agriculture scientist this zooming agriculture is being practiced in the tropical zone between the tropic of cancer and capricorn especially this is practiced along the equatorial climatic region which will be studied in detail while studying the crop regions of world and zooming practice there to protect the soil from this zooming agriculture there is a control of zooming agriculture and forest or plantation agriculture for example in the zooming region in northeast india all the farmers have been advised by the concerned state governments uh, to raise their rubber plantation crop and other tea crops because plantation crops provide much money and facility to the farmers next point is relay cropping what is relay cropping relay cropping means if there is one field uh, with a one farmer uh, there are three seasons of crop in a year and farmers practice or grow three continuous crops means 
rabi kharif and jaid in all the three crops the crops are being irrigated wherein the top fertile chemical components of soil are being carried down by leaching thus ultimately the top fertile chemicals are being settled down in the b horizon of the soil and ultimately that soil become or unfertile that's why relay cropping is a not is not a good practice rather there should be a single cropping one crop on one field in one year is the best but if there is a if the basic need of farmers are not being fulfilled then double cropping may be practiced but not this relay cropping next is urban industrial waste today it is age of urbanization age of industrialization both of which discharge urban and industrial effluent that effluent may be solid based and liquid state these are being released the discharged and uh, discharge to the fertile land because today this urbanization and industrialization practice is taking place in the plain areas maybe mississippi plain maybe huangho yangtze gangetic plain mare darling plain that's why these discharges are being disposed of in the plain areas on the fertile soil thus the fertile soil is being covered with this urban industrial waste for example in one ardhkumbh from allahabad city the urban industrial effluent was disposed of through over the naini bridge and that accumulated in dandi village of karchana tahsil where one inch thick layer of dark black industrial urban effluent was there which became a focal point for the world community thus the soil gets polluted and the only way to control it is the recycling and proper disposal of such urban and industrial effluents next is arsenal waste where when we prepare weapons and some chemicals related to that then these wastes and effluents are also being discharged and it is being disposed of in the plain areas where there is a rich and there is uh, fertile layer of soil and this causes a great loss of soil it's only the conservation measure is proper disposal of the arsenal wastes for example in united states of america there is problem once they dug a well near the appalachian and disposed that effluent of in that well which caused micro tremor that's why disposal of such chemicals is a great challenge to humanity because it if disposed in the plain will pollute soil if disposed in the oceanic water pollute water and it will cause the degradation in the ecosystem and the soil system next point is rejuvenation by brick kin today it is the age of urbanization and industrialization for which concrete or pakka house or residence is needed not only in urban and industrial regions rather along the roads if you see it is world wide phenomena that people are busy in constructing the pakka houses and all the villages are being converted into the concrete forest this needs the soil and people from the fertile plains are taking fertile soil converting 
it into concrete bricks and that is being used for the construction of pakka houses. That's why it is a problem because it takes thousands of years to develop a fertile soil for the nature. But it is man who takes it within a six month and converts that fertile soil into the bricks. That's why it is also a cause of ravination and great loss to fertile soil. That's why it is suggestible that the people in the plain should take the soil that is mud brought down by the rivers from high mountains or plateau and deposit it in the river bed and convert that into bricks and use for building purposes. For example, Japan is using the mud of the drains for the construction of brick and that brick is of the best quality in the world. That's why from all the urban rivulets such types of liquid material should be extracted and the bricks should be developed. So these are the important points which should be discussed in the man-made soil pollution and these are the two points natural soil pollution or soil degradation and there may be separate questions by the UPSC like which are the natural man-made soil degradation or pollution when you will take these two and with the help of map elaborate these and show the conservation measures. But if there is question and chances are more that you discuss the man-made soil degradation then you will have to take all these things and discuss in detail with suitable examples and their conservation measures. But today UPS is coming down to very micro level questions that's why independent questions in 50 or 100 words may be asked on the usurization discuss it in detail with suitable example salinization, arsenic problem, wasteland development management, wetland, wetland, ravination, zhumi agriculture and all these things independently can be discussed can be asked by UPSC that's why you have to prepare especially these because these are man-made and great challenge before the soil existence of soil and soil at large is getting polluted by these and the conservation measures developed by the man should be answered with these. So this is about the soil problem. Soil problem is one topic. In soil problem there will be two subtopics soil erosion and number two soil degradation or pollution. So you will see how question is there and you will answer that accordingly.